Hello, everyone. This is Daniel LaPlante from Magnoliaverse.com. I'm here with Alex Aronowitz to talk Hellboy in the BPRD, The Beast of Vargu, the new one-shot that just released. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? Hey. So uh, we've each uh, read the issue one time. Uh, it's not entirely what I was expecting going in, because, uh, frankly, this doesn't really have <laughs> any tie-in to Hellboy in the BPRD. It's might as well just be called Hellboy. But I guess, you know, I think they're tying it into it since he's still in the BPRD at this point. You know what I mean? Because that's true. By the, by the time the future comes around, he's just Hellboy. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's also that um, like Mike Mignola wrote this issue and it's art by Duncan Fregretto. So it just feels like it, it fits in at the end of like with the Wild Hunt, Storm and Fury. <laughs> Which is, by the way, I forgot how amazing... Even though I've reread it a bunch of times and I've reread it recently, seeing a new Duncan Fregredo uh, art, I know. think it's it, it's so great. Like seeing new Duncan Fregredo for Hellboy art because it's like I've read the other ones like so many times. Like you take it for granted. Seeing fresh, I mean, there's a couple of panels here that I just definitely want to call up when we get to them. That seeing that, fresh Duncan, yeah, mwah. that is exactly what I was thinking. Like, uh. Even as confused as I was being like, is this actually Hellboy in the BPRD? Like, the unexpected surprise of getting just, like, raw Mike Mignola, Duncan Fregretto, Hellboy was like, ah, oh, my heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, It's just so good, like, getting his, uh, or Mignola's, like, kind of, I don't know if you want to call it, like, cryptic writing. Also that cover, mm -hmm. too, by uh, um, F Fumara is awesome. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically exactly what was running through my head while reading this. Uh, it's a very big throwback to the, 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 well, I guess not really the old days. It's like the newer old days. The <laughs> third arc old. Hellboy, the third part Hellboy. But, uh, yeah. Uh, how'd you feel? Uh, you've only read this issue once, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what, what were your thoughts kind of going through it? Like, uh, <laughs> so you, this was, this is definitely not what I expected. I didn't know how it was going to go, especially like you said, when I thought it was Hellboy in the BPRD, I thought there was going to be a team. Um, but then at that point where it takes that twist, or I guess that's page like 12 or 13, where it just takes that twist, uh, uh, was actually really awesome. I, I really love that twist that they had. Not, and not, I'm saying it like it's this crazy thing. I just don't want to you know, jump ahead, but yeah. I, I enjoy it. The way that the direction of it went like what and it kind of gave me a little throwback to uh hellboy in hell right but we, we I guess we'll get, get over to that yeah and we don't necessarily have to talk about this one in order uh yeah uh this is just kind of like 15 minutes of us doing just yeah talking the breeze but uh talking the breeze talking the New breeze phrase. yeah <laughs> it's copywritten i copyrighted it wrote it i'm also going to copyright react it's yes. gonna be a good time. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, the Beast of Vargu, adorable. <laughs> I, I, I'm a he cat is, person. Though. <laughs> I'm a cat person, and a giant cat with wings is like, I love this thing, and it's vicious, and there's so much blood. Like there's a lot of blood. People who said that the Hellboy movie was too bloody, there's a lot of blood in this. Yeah, you just look at this uh, panel, though. Uh, I, I don't know what page it's on, but um, it's Hellboy getting his leg bitten by the beast, and it yeah. just it's looking up at you going, rawr. But if you take away the blood part, it looks just kind of like a kitten playing with a leg, you know? Yeah. It's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable. I, I love this. And the next panel, like two, two panels down, like it is adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that so? It and, really I, and I don't is. mean to diminish the fact that it's this giant monster. I love that it's this giant vicious monster, and I'm not you know there's nothing against Duncan. It looks amazing, but I, I it's you a just cat love thing. cats. And you gotta all felines. I love all felines. You know, <laughs> this is like an, this is like a cat video on YouTube. Exactly, cats killing Hellboy. Can we just get like a like an animatic of this comic but then put like the stereotypical toy piano like do 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 <laughs> like youtube cat music yeah <laughs> um I, so, I hope they come out with an action figure of this beast of Vargo. oh that'd be buy. sick 
Uh, I like um, later when we get to meet the uh, Hellboy's new friends. Uh, the Romani. The yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like when the the grandmother. That's her grandmother, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and she says, "Make sure you save me some of that blood." <laughs> yeah, Which, I. I was like, what is happening with the blood? Yeah. But it's, it ends up being benign. It ends up, she's just using it, it looks like, to what? Paint the uh, the Hellboy puppet, right? That's what she's using it for? Yeah, I don't know if, <laughs> that's still a little creepy, but you know. It's, it's, definitely, it's, oh, it's definitely creepy. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, I didn't actually, I read this twice through, and um, I didn't actually catch that on the first time. I read through the whole thing, like, why did she need the blood? <laughs> and I realized right. it was to paint the doll. Or not the doll, the puppet. Um. <laughs> and, and this this is a little jarring, right? So you go from one page where she's like, sleep, and he pants, passes out, and then she says, wake. And he's immediately sitting up and <laughs> watching the puppet show. There was no transition for that, but that was a, that was a little weird. But um. I definitely think, though, that was actually intentionally jarring, though, because it's supposed oh, okay. to be, like, kind of freaky. Uh, yeah. So it's like, I agree. Like, I, I turned that page, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. But um, this hand, this hand of her light in the candle, it is grisly, and I love it. The way he draws the puppets too, emoting, <gasps> is really good. Like um, how he's like yeah. holding, like you can, I don't know what about it really makes it feel like a puppet, but I, I don't, I don't know. It's like the puppets are very expressive, but also they feel. It's not just because they're drawn like wood. There's there's something about the way he draws them that I can't really put my finger on that looks. Uh, well, like the facial expression on, I can, I'll never say this guy's name, Kostash Zilagi. It, I the think way they drew his mother. I think the first name's Kostak. Kostak. I, I don't know what Kostak? the last name. I cannot pronounce Zilagi? the last name. Zilagi. Um, Zilagi. The, the 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 mother the mother's face is so expressive. The way he drew that little carved puppet, like so, she's so sad. Yeah. Uh, and you know you could tell they're puppets because their hands stay in the same shape the whole time that whole thing but like oh man but it's messed up that this guy buried his mom alive in a, in a thing and made her listen to his black masses the the cool thing about this too is that through this whole story it's like cutting between uh the puppets but then it just randomly cuts to actual like the reality and then mm -hmm. also it adds a third layer to that later because it's revealed that they're actually showing what happened with Hellboy before too. So it's cutting between what's happening with the puppets, then what's happening in the other reality with Hellboy. Then it's mm -hmm. cutting to Hellboy currently watching himself in the other reality. It's just now like, that Whoa. panel, <laughs> that panel where the cigarettes falling out of his mouth, the expression yeah! on his, his face. He's so young here and his, cause this is 1962. So he's like in his twenties. I, I don't he, think this is 1962, is it? It is. It's uh, at the very top. It says 1962. Does it? Oh, I thought it, it was says, later. No, it says Romania 1962. Oh, That's like all the right. First... And so he's in his 20s, and he looks like a 20-year-old. Uh, you know you know what I mean? Just yeah, like, he does. He looks so young. He doesn't look as, as, as old and grizzled as, you know, as we're used to. Yeah. But and... this Beast of Bargu, I want this puppet. If they if they if if Dark Horse made this puppet and charged four hundred dollars for it, sold yeah. in a second. <laughs> Can you imagine one second? If if it was just like it's a giant cat, but then it also has like like the front is like fur, but the back's kind of feathers, and it also has like the, the wings. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. It, I, I love it. It's I, the cutest I agree. thing I've ever seen. It's never gonna be in a single Hellboy story after this, and I want it. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. Who knows? Maybe it'll come back. But... Also, can I just say in the beginning, too, a little off topic, that uh, when Hellboy's talking with Professor Broom, who's kind of giving the exposition dump, and Hellboy's mm -hmm. like, Professor the Monster, and he's just going on and on and on about all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we all know someone like that. That, that like We all know a professor. Doesn't know, what to do, doesn't know what to shut up. Yeah, we all know that professor. Um, <laughs> I mean, I might be that person, but that's fine. <laughs> I uh yeah, the, there's just something about Hell the way thing. he draws Hellboy like holding the the mic the microphone away from his ear like uh it looks almost mm. painful to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Um, the monster, the monster. <laughs> and we also get a 
Um, a very quick extra short story after this that kind of... it. I don't really consider it an extra short story since it's kind of a, a connected... It's kind of an thing. epilogue. Yeah, it's more of an epilogue. Uh, and they kind of go over... Uh, well, it, it's very... this The epilogue... I'm just going to call it the epilogue. It reminds me a lot of like how Koshe the Deathless was written. Very yes. like folk folklorey, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm totally pro of that. Um, we get more of the puppet stuff too. But I like the, see the thing I like about the puppets is the puppets is it's like it's exposition, but it's active exposition. Oh yeah, it's great. You, you know what I mean? So we're getting the history of this guy, and the same thing with with the previous puppet show is, and that's what I was saying. It was like Hellboy in Hell, where like he doesn't remember it happening, but he did it, and someone has to s explain to him how he did something that he doesn't remember doing. It you actually, know what I mean? Yeah. Just like in Hellboy in Hell, when he kills Satan, he doesn't remember doing it. It has to be broken down for him, for him to remember it. And oh. and, I, and I, and I love that in that puppet show, and this puppet show gives you this whole other reality this whole other myth and like you know there's nothing there's none of that um mike mignola giving you like where he got this idea from so now i want now i want to research if this is a real story you know a real romani myth you know what i mean right i uh and it, it never occurred to me that connection you just brought up which like knowing mignola there probably is actually like a little bit of a connection there uh, that right. he hasn't told us but um and it also i it just uh they're not like super related, but it did. Re these puppets do remind me a little bit, especially in the epilogue part of um, the opening sequence to Hellboy Two, the movie with like the wooden soldiers. Yes, it j I just got that in my brain. And I was like, ah, oh, man, that that's actually very, very similar. Um, <laughs> yeah, that 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 opening. In, yeah, I love the puppets in that opening, and I do see you know with the hands and everything like that. Yeah. I feel like that's a big thing. Like the hands look familiar, and now I know what they look familiar from. It's it's that same opening from from Hellboy Two. I also just like, you know, there's so it's so easy to like make a story that directly parallels Hellboy, uh, Hellboy's whole like, you know, what, what do you want to call it? Like all the uh, mythology behind him. But they chose like mm -hmm. a really weird story to try to relate with him. Uh, and I like that. I, I like that they they try to take something. Uh, like, how many times have we seen Hell, Hellboy's whole dynamic explained? They tried a right. really cool way to take the story that almost seems like it has nothing to do with him and actually give it something to tie in with him. I don't know if that makes no. any sense. Uh, no, but it's the same thing. We've got this half man, half like this puppet show has got the half man, half god. Right. So he's more than human. And he's got a destiny set out for him. And he's got a whole, you know what I mean? He's got this whole thing. And he's got people trying to tempt him to, to go for, to go his way. And he says no. So it all kind of like, I guess it kind of relates to Hellboy where... It does. This, you know, this little half angel, half man is like, no, I don't need your temptation. I'm going to do my own thing. So I guess that's like yeah, you know, Hellboy related, you know, his own story. And it's a way of doing that, but without it being like over the head, like, look, it directly parallels Hellboy. It's just, mm -hmm. it's another folktale uh, from R Romanian culture that y you can get something out of in regards to Hellboy. But it also just kind of works as its own little story, uh, yeah. which I, I think is great. <laughs> I, 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 he likes that story. I'm going to probably read this story like a million more times. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's probably more to absorb in this. Oh, yeah. And I love that he just ends it. The last piece of dialogue is, I like that story. Yeah. it's And, and this is something funny. I'm going to bring up the movie again, is that um, when I was with my girlfriend, we were talking about the movie afterwards. She was like, he didn't talk enough. I was like, honestly, he talks too much in the movie because he doesn't talk at all. And the guy, he says like 10 words in the comic. Yeah, exactly. Movie, you know, she's like, he didn't talk that much. I'm like, that's actually good. That's very, very well in character. Exactly. Yeah. And he just likes to but yeah, listen. But yeah, I'm gonna read this a few more times to get get a good. Uh, I like the get a good absorption of it. I like that there's a solid genre of Hellboy stories of Hellboy just listening to people tell stories. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which uh, yeah, with like so little action, but he just gets the story. You know, what I mean? it's like he kind of acts like a, that, like us as the viewer, right? 
And it's nice to have the main character of the story be us. Right. You know I mean? Because there's so many there's so many movies, stories, everything where like, you know, C three PO and, and R2 D2 is supposed to be like us. That's us in the movie. You know what I mean? Or or um even again, stupid, you know, the Hellboy movie from two thousand four. Age of Myers is supposed to be us as the viewer implanted into the movie. And all these Hellboy stories where we are Hellboy. We are there listening to the story. You know what I mean? Right. That's very interesting that Mike does that. But yeah, I'm excited for the new story uh, that we will be getting coming out in uh, August. It's a three-part oh. story, actually. It's three of these with uh, <laughs> art by Christopher Mitten. I don't know if Mike Mignola is writing, I believe... I, I think he's writing. I don't know if Chris Robertson's also writing that one. I think it might just be Mignola, though. This is what? The next uh, Hellboy in the BPRD? Yeah, and it's it's the Saturn Returns. Uh, and it's a three-parter, but it doesn't have a number just like this one. Um, oh, so it's not going to be like... 19, we're not going to know if it's 1957? It, it's not 1957. The, the next one takes place in the 80s. I think. Oh, whoa. I think okay. so. I think that's what I, I need said. some more... I need some more Hellboy in the 70s wearing bell bottoms. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see that picture? I haven't, but I forget what I forget what story it's from, but it's Hellboy wearing bell bottoms. I love or, I've probably I've, I've read every Hellboy story, so I, I might just be blanking on it. Yeah. Um unless I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But regardless, I'm very excited for that. Uh yeah. We're gonna try to have everybody as a group work. I know Gwen's going to try to get caught up with uh, Hellboy and the BPRD so that we can talk that together. Although now I'm wondering if it's even going to be really related to it. Although, in the cover art for that, I believe the owl from um, the owl guy from 19, 1946 is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I forget cool. his, what Do you know what his name is? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, he shows up a bunch of times. But yeah, no, I'll... Uh, yeah. If that's in that... Yeah, well, you know... It's good to get caught up on it anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, discussing. Uh, yeah. We're going to be back whenever the next rele big release is, and we'll have a discussion up. Uh, we're going to start doing more of these. Um, we're, yeah, you can also check out our podcast on the website. In the future, I'll actually have like a script to, so that I don't sound like a bumbling idiot. <laughs> and um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and uh, like us on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Bye. Bye.